Do you have any hidden talents? Nope. That's Steve Ducey. He's a great guy. You courageous, not... courageous. Right, you like you. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Best-selling author, Emmy Award recipient, one-third of the president's favorite show, and the architect of a dangerously high treehouse for his son. And she looked at it and she goes, that is too tall. And I looked at it <laughs> and she was right. It's too high. It is dangerously high. Stephen James Ducey was born in 1956 in Algona, Iowa, but grew up in Abilene, Kansas. His first job was cleaning the parking lot at a Tasty Freeze in Russell, Kansas, where he got paid 25 cents an hour. Ducey graduated from high school in 1975, just around the time the White House was being pried by Washington Post reporters Woodward and Bernstein, whom Ducey credited with his journalism undertaking. Ducey told the Washington Post in 1989, gee whiz, it would be cool to be a newspaper reporter. He attended the University of Kansas that fall as a journalism major. I went to college in the fall, and the first day I'm there, I'm walking to the journalism building, and I walk past the college radio station, and it was loud, and there's funky music coming out. Somehow, I wind up in the building. Ducey switched from journalism to disc jockey, which eventually led to a weatherman gig in Topeka after graduating from KU in 79. I didn't know anything about the weather. I can't do this because I haven't taken any meteorology classes. I am challenging former Vice President Al Gore to a debate Are you? on climate change. After his stint calling the highs and lows had more lows, Ducey went to Wichita and hosted PM Magazine, an entertainment-style news program which reported on stories from the local and national level. PM Magazine, it's good TV. PM Magazine, it's good TV. Ducey spent two and a half years at PM Magazine, where he asked the hard-hitting questions. Are there any disadvantages to being so big and strong? After Ducey switched to host a Kansas City version of the show, the program was canceled and replaced by a little show called Wheel of Fortune. But Ducey wasn't out of a job for long. He was asked to stay on the station as a feature news reporter, which he did for about nine months before taking his talents to WRC-TV, an NBC affiliate in Washington in 1984. Ducey went right to bat working for WRC-TV, where he spent a large chunk of his time wrestling high school students in a ring filled with jello, skiing down the side of the Washington Monument, being catapulted from a circus tent on the mall into the Capitol Rotunda and reporting on potatoes. Today the potato person came to Washington spreading good luck and Steve Ducey is here to tell us why. So why? Why is he so appealing? But for his Live at Five segments, Ducey would report on the serious stuff. But that sort of sometimes tragic thing came easier to him. Ducey told the Washington Post in 1989, a regular news story is pretty easy to tell because there's a car wreck or explosion, he said, as he threw the remnants of his lunch at a nearby wastebasket and missed. He seemingly thought back to the tough improvisation that came with swimming in jello. We're making everything up here, he said. Steve Ducey was always a strange. It was at WRC-TV that Ducey met his soon-to-be wife, Kathy, who was working in the same building. Ducey was in awe the first time he saw her on TV, working a World Series game as a sideline reporter. He mustered up enough courage to approach her one day at work. Ducey saw her at the NBC commissary with a burger and fries. He explains in his book, for a size six, she ate like a teamster. The first line he spoke to his current wife many years ago in the NBC commissary was, what's that stuff on your fries? Plasma? She told him it was ketchup, the well-known condiment. Ducey continued speaking at her while peppering in compliments. Kathy cut him off. My boss says you're a womanizer. You've dated every woman at NBC, and you've been seen lurking at CBS. Ducey shot back, that's not true, and then he writes in his book, it was ABC. But eventually the two went on a date where Steve accidentally spilled wine and coffee on her lap in the same night. And then this happened. At the end of the date, and this was our first date, uh, I said, you're going to think I'm crazy, but someday we're going to be married. And then you said, I think you need to go home now. But she saw something in him, because a few months later, they married, despite this. I said, Peter, P, Mary, Mary, M, Sally, S. She goes, that's PMS. You can't make a necklace for your wife that says PMS. He did. Yeah. He made it. By 1996, Ducey joined a brand new up-and-coming network, Fox News. He began co-hosting Fox & Friends in 1998, where he's been saying things like this ever since. It took a full 30 minutes 
for the driver to squeeze into the parallel spot. So who was behind the wheel? Well, it turns out it was a woman. Ducey has a long record of sexist remarks. When he was promoting his second book, he went on a radio program and said this. With girls, girls don't really want to play the sport. They just want to hang out. It, it, being a coach for girls is like herding cats. And he claimed Hollywood had a male deficiency. It would be nice for Hollywood to have more male figures in those kind of movies. But those were just Ducey's words. At Fox, he was implicated in Gretchen Carlson's lawsuit against Roger Ailes for sexual harassment. Carlson said Ducey had created a hostile work environment by treating her in a sexist and condescending way, including putting his hand on her and shushing her during a live telecast. The civil suit continues. Ducey engaged in a pattern and practice of severe and pervasive sexual harassment of Carlson, including, but not limited to, mocking her during commercial breaks, shutting her off air, refusing to engage with her on air, belittling her contributions to the show, and generally attempting to put her in her place by refusing to accept and treat her as an intelligent and insightful female journalist rather than a blonde female prop. <laughs> Going. Chicks. While Ailes and a slew of others resigned from Fox after allegedly sexually harassing women, Ducey has remained intact. And he's been a large part of taking a right-wing, run-of-the-mill morning talk show and turning it into the president's daily briefing and what the New York Times has labeled the most powerful show in America. A former White House official told Politico that Trump schedules meetings based on what the show airs. With their number one fan in the White House, Fox and Friends has the ability to change the course of America one segment at a time. As the New York Times notes, President Trump is the show's subject, its programmer, its publicist, and its virtual fourth host. Supposing Hillary You're got elected instead of Trump, do you think it would be so exciting? Listen, Your ratings you would be way down. Number one show in the morning, folks.